In a world where change is the only constant, have you ever felt lost in the shuffle, struggling to keep your head above water? Now, imagine being told as a teenager that your life's constant upheaval is just an adventure, only to find yourself battling a storm of depression and burnout behind closed doors. Now, this isn't just a story, it's my reality. And I'd like to welcome you back to part two of our Easter series, where we peel back the layers of vulnerability to show you the light at the end of a very dark tunnel. Today, we're going through the brokenness to witness the resurrection of hope and healing. And yes, I'm warning you now, this episode, it's personal, it's raw, and it's a journey through the shadows to find the light. Because if there's one thing my story has taught me, it's that the path to overcoming isn't paved with silence, but rather with sharing, healing, and ultimately rising. Welcome to the Christian CEO Podcast. I'm Katie Bother, and I have built an impactful location independent business since 2008 with plenty of rejections, English as my third language, and lots of God's grace. Each week, we will be sharing relevant and direct advice or inspiring interviews with one intention. It's your time to go pro with your marketplace calling. Now, let's get to it. Hello, and welcome back to part two of our Easter series, where we open up and share some of the more vulnerable parts of our stories to show you that whatever you're facing can be overcome, because we've been there too. Today, I'm going to talk about mental health, depression, and burnout. In case anyone is triggered about these topics, I'm warning you now, it's going to get deep, personal, and I might get a little bit emotional, because even though it's been a few years since then, it still weighs heavily on you. As some of you know, I'm a TCK. That stands for Third Culture Kid. Now, this term just means that I spent the majority of my childhood growing up in countries, which was A, not the one I was born in, or B, either of my parents. So, by the time I was 15 years old, we had lived on three different continents, four different countries, and six different schools, not counting nursery or preschool. As you can tell, that's quite a lot of change for anyone to go through. And regardless of what people tell you, it can and will take a toll on you, whether you realize it or not. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm very appreciative of the way I grew up, and I enjoyed exploring new places, being involved in new cultures and broadening my horizons. I've had some amazing opportunities, from attending youth leadership conferences in Washington, D.C., to hiking national parks in Thailand as part of the Duke of Edinburgh program, to organizing conferences for university students here in Switzerland. I still have plans of my own to keep traveling and probably move around as well, but I want to share with you some of the signs that I missed along the way that I was neglecting my mental health. Mental health when I was in my teenage years was definitely not as big a topic as it is in today's world. While arguably social media was still in its infancy, as Instagram was still fairly new at the time, launching in the late early 2010s when I was around 14 years old, the topic of mental health wasn't talked about that much. Of course, the cliche is that in hindsight, everything is clear. Now, regardless of all the changes in my life, I've always enjoyed studying and school. It was quite logical, which appeased the organizer inside of me and fulfilled my enjoyment of learning new things, as I've always been a bookworm since a young child. However, in my last semester of my senior year in high school, I was already starting to lose that joy and passion. Fast forward to later that year, and I was in university, working towards a degree in international relations. I was making friends, going out, and finally able to have a bit more freedom in the choice of my classes. From the outside looking in, it seemed like I had it all. Yet, lurking behind the shadows, I was tired. I was constantly procrastinating, or even barely studying before exams, crying on train rides home, at the time I was commuting on a daily basis, roughly three hours round trip, and I didn't have any idea why. Slowly, I started to disconnect from the world, feeling out of touch with everything and eventually realizing that I felt numb. Nothing phased me anymore. It felt like I was watching a movie, where I was looking in from the outside as my body would go through the motions of sitting in classes, meeting up for group projects, and heading home, rinse and repeat. Now, the tipping point came near the end of the year, when I saw a flyer for free counseling, as the university had psychologists on campus, ready to help us with anything we wanted to talk about. Now, I had never gone to therapy before, and generally have never been one for sharing or talking about my emotions, preferring instead to hide them and bury them deep, deep down. However, I found that in the days leading up to that therapy session, my journal entries were becoming more and more erratic, intense, 
as the words were flowing out of my hand. And what was scary was at the time, my brain felt that all of those thoughts were completely rational. But something inside me knew that this wasn't right, that this wasn't how my brain was working or supposed to be working. So I often say that that therapy session with the psychologist saved my life because I had reached a tipping point where everything came pouring out. I couldn't stop crying and it was simultaneously the worst and most freeing two hours as everything came up. After that session, I went home and fell asleep hard as my body couldn't keep up with all the emotions that had come pouring out of me. By no means was I now cured or better, but it was step one of a long road that continued over the following years as I had come to terms with battling burnout and depression. Unfortunately, due to the deep depression and burnout state that I was in at the time, it led me to flunking out of university, which added another layer of guilt into this depression cycle. I didn't sleep well for quite a few months, as every time when I put my head on my pillow, my brain would automatically think about the fact that I flunked out knowing that I'm fully well and capable of actually passing those exams. That guilt was eating away at me and my confidence level, especially at the time I was dealing with the unknown side effects of having long-term COVID. It took me over a year to get an official diagnosis of chronic fatigue syndrome, and it was a frustrating time, as there were many things I couldn't do as I was constantly exhausted or would tire out quickly from. During this period of time, I went through all the stages of depression, which are pretty similar to the stages of grief, which makes sense, especially as I was losing parts of myself due to the depression. But this is where I want to share with you about the joy I found in coming out of that dark space and finding myself through Christ again. Now, when you're in that moment, it seems like there's no way out. And as you may have heard from others, the only way out is through it. Unfortunately, not everyone makes it as depression has you fighting your own brain. What kept me going was my friends and family and the sense of responsibility that I had towards them because I felt that I needed to be there for them. I would be giving up on everything and everyone if I made and took that final decision. I'm not gonna glamorize it. It was a hard and brutal process. There were days where I could barely just make it through with my thoughts constantly at war with each other. And that voice of doubt was sometimes the only one I could hear. I'm so grateful for my friends and family who were still calling me up and inviting me to do things even though my body couldn't always handle it because it made me feel seen. I felt heard and needed. This prompted me to start to look forward again to the future of what could be, moving from a survival mode to a thriving mode. As I was fighting through, I found my faith again. Now, I had been brought up in a Christian household and was, am, a strong believer in God. However, with everything that I was going through, I felt that I couldn't hear God or feel his presence anymore, and my spark of faith was dying. During the pandemic, as in-person gatherings were banned, I started to tune in online with the family, watching sermons from different pastors, getting new perspectives on what I would have thought were the most straightforward biblical stories. But as time passed, I found myself soaking in the word and renewing not just my faith, but also my hope. Hope that this too would pass, and hope that this wasn't the end of this, my story, but a hard one chapter. Now, before I leave you today, I wanted to also share with you the top three hard-learned lessons that I have from this experience, because these are things that I wish I had known about before all this happened. Number one, express your emotions. This was the hardest lesson for me to learn, because growing up, I had learned to be independent, and I felt that showing emotions would make you appear weak. I struggled with sharing my emotions, even with myself or with close friends, and would rather stuff them all down inside of me, because I felt that I always had to be strong especially as I was seen as the mom friend of the group, you know? The one you always go to when you have problems and need help fixing it. Because of that, I felt ashamed to bother people with my problems or even my emotions. I'm still a work in progress, and I've been making sure that I express my emotions, whether it's through journaling, leaving voice notes to myself, calling up friends for advice, or sweating it out. I've found punching or running to be quite effective at helping me to clear my head, but you do you. Please make sure that you do get it all out, though. I would also recommend going to see a psychologist, because sometimes it's easier to talk to a stranger than a friend, and it can help you rediscover things about yourself, too. If you bottle everything up, just as I did, it will leave you a lot worse off, because as much as you try to do it, it's not a healthy coping mechanism. Lesson 2. Give yourself grace. There are so many messages out there about hustle culture but it doesn't take into account the toll that it takes on you in all areas of your life. I feel that there's a lot of pressure 
especially on people my age, that we need to have it all sorted out and we need to be constantly striving for the next thing. And yes, I will admit that if you check my current schedule, you may wonder how it works out as I do study full time and I work quite a bit as well. But not every day am I capable of going full speed. I mean, take today for example. While I did go for a long run this morning, as I'm training for a half marathon, I still took a nap afterwards. I had a fairly le leisurely lunch, then worked on writing this episode before recording it. After this, I'm probably going to end up watching an episode or two of my current favorite show with pizza, and then review my upcoming week before going to bed. Some days, your best is 50% of what you can do, and some days it's closer to 100. But either way, you're doing the best that you can do. I read recently a quote that resonated with me. Either you take the time for yourself and your body, or your body will do it for you. Lesson three, daily or weekly check-ins or combo of both. Now, this is where I'd say you need to assess how are you really feeling? We ask people all the time, how are they doing? But do we ever ask ourselves? While this lesson does connect with the first one related to expressing your emotions, it's also important to make sure that we have that margin of rest in our schedules. I'm sure many of you have heard of Dr. Sandra Dalton-Smith and then seven types of rest that she introduced the world to, from physical to mental to emotional, sensory, creative, social, and most importantly, spiritual rest. But how do you actually make sure that your bars of rest are full? Now, as an ADHD woman who loves to be organized, but has commitment issues when it comes to actually filling in her planner or using it consistently, because I think that I will remember it. Spoiler, I don't. My desk is full of sticky notes because I cannot trust myself to remember things. I have found that implementing weekly check-ins where I reflect on these areas of rest and my current areas of life to be a godsend. Not only am I forcing myself to be honest with myself, it ensures that I stay on track with my goals and helps me to be aware of where I really am especially as I don't want to go back to that state of survival mode. So this story isn't just about me and my journey of battling depression and burnout. It's for anyone out there facing tough times. It's a reminder that with a little faith and some great friends by your side, you can get through just about anything. So as my mother mentioned before in yesterday's episode, as we share these stories and insights with you, our prayer is not only do they inspire you, but also remind you of the powerful hope we have in Christ. That no matter what we go through, our faith and the community around us can help us see through to the miracles waiting on the other side. So, I hope to catch you in the next episode, where we'll explore how to live more intentionally and joyfully within the divine rhythms. Join us next time as Mom and I delve into the revelations God has been sharing with us about the essence of true productivity. We're moving away from the relentless pace of the world's hustle culture to welcome what we affectionately term She Inherited Rhythms. This journey isn't about merely checking off to-dos or jam-packing our schedules. Instead, it's about harmonizing with the pace and patterns God has intricately woven into our lives, ensuring fulfillment that touches every aspect of our existence. If these episodes have resonated with you, I encourage you to spread the word. Share them with your friends, your family, and especially your business besties. Let's widen our circle of support, reminding everyone that they're not journeying alone. Together, we can be beacons of encouragement and light in each other's lives. Catch you in the next episode, where we'll explore how to live more intentionally and joyfully within She Inherited Rhythms. Hi there. If you have found this episode resonating with you, would you please consider to take a moment? Just drop a review on Apple Podcast. It will serve a fresh dose of blessings to those of us who work so hard to produce the content week in and week out. Please go to kellybala.com forward slash review. Again, that's kellybala.com forward slash review. We really appreciate it. And you will also help more fellow Christian CEOs find this podcast. Thank you so much. Remember, you matter. See you in the next episode. Thanks for listening to the Christian CEO Podcast at www.kellybotter.com.